الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمد الله سبحانه وتعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وصلواته وسلامه على افضل خلق الله على سيدنا وحبيبنا رسول الله محمد بن عبد الله وعلى اله ومن والاه اما بعد في عباد الله اوصيكم اوصي نفسي بتقوى الله في السر والعلنيه فان تقوى الله لا ياتي الا بخير والله سبحانه وتعالى وصانا في كتابه في عده اماكن ان نتقي الله سبحانه وتعالى والتقوى هو اجتناب الله هو اجتناب هو هو امتثال باوامر الله سبحانه وتعالى واجتناب نواهيه في ظاهر وباطن التقوى راس الدين والله سبحانه وتعالى جعل مخافه الله سبحانه وتعالى راس الحكمه الله سبحانه وتعالى says in the Quran that he says innani ana Allah la ilaha illa ana fa'budni wa aqim as-salata li dhikri Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes addresses people directly in the Quran other times he uses the second or the third person but in this case he's using the first person innani ana Allah declaring that i am your God, I am Allah. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us. Innani ana Allah. La ilaha illa ana. There's nothing worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Me here, he says. Except me alone. And then he says, so worship me. So worship me, ibadah, and establish the prayer for my re- remembrance. Li dhikri. Aqimu salata li dhikri. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the masajid are biyut, fi biyutin adhin allahu an turfa' in houses that Allah has permitted to be erected for him wa yudhkara fiha ismuhu and that in those houses his name is mentioned. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yusabbihu lahu fiha and they worship him in those houses. In the ghudwa, in the morning, the early morning period, and in the afternoon period, because these are the two most important times of ibadah. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned the fajr and the isha prayer, athqalu salah al munafiqeen. They are the hardest prayers for the hypocrites, the early prayer and the late prayer. So these two times in particular are times, even the birds, if you listen in the morning, early morning, in the late afternoon, even the birds gather in the trees and you can hear them doing their tasbih. The Prophet ﷺ loved the frogs. He said of all the creatures, he loved the frogs the most because they did the most tasbih. And you can hear them in the early morning and in the, uh, in the evening doing their uh, tasbih. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about these people that they're rijal. لا تلهيهم تجارة ولا بيع عن ذكر الداء وإقام الصلاة وإيتاء الزكاة that they are not preoccupied from their commerce and their trade from remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it doesn't preoccupy them they remember Allah one of the Andalusian travelers went to Mecca and when he came back people used to ask the question what's the strangest thing you saw he said I saw a, an old man clinging to the Kaaba Asking for dunya. That was the strangest thing that he saw. An old man clinging to the Kaaba asking for dunya. And he said, and then I went into the souk and I saw a young man in the midst of his trading remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. The heart, if it's connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People don't think about what Allah has done for them. They don't think about it. They're in heedlessness. People, there are people now that haven't remembered God for years. They don't even think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And yet every instant is completely and utterly dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your breath, your lungs, your kidneys, your digestion, everything is dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one who has ordered the universe. He is the Qayyum. He's the one who has set it up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing everything for us. And then He asks for us to do some things for Him. To remember Him at least five times a day. That's minimal. He's, he's remembering us in every instant. Because if He didn't remember us, we wouldn't even exist. That is a higher, if you remember me in this way, then I'll remember you. If you remember me, whoever remembers me in a gathering like this, Allah says He will make mention of him in a gathering better than that gathering. Amongst the angels. There's people unknown to everybody that are known to the angels because they're simple people that nobody even thinks about or gives them the time of day, but they're up in the night before Fajr calling on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah knows those people and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes those people known to His mala, to His assembly. So Allah has given us masajid, وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا the masajid are for the sake of Allah. Do not call upon other than Allah in the masajid. Whoever asks for, says that I lost something in a masjid, according to the hadith, you're supposed to say, La radallahu dalatak. Don't, may Allah not return the thing you lost. لِأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لَمْ تُبْنَى لِهَذَا Because masjids were not built to ask people if they know where you uh, left your such and such. They were built for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or they were bought for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People build things. They don't know why they're building things. Somebody had an idea here and it's become another idea. The architects when they built this, they didn't think about Qibla. <laughs> but it's... Maqdur, it's something Allah decreed people one day would be praying in this building. SubhanAllah. People in this country, you know, Islam is, is <coughs> showing up everywhere. You can't get away from Muslims in America. I can't. Wherever I go, I see Muslims. You can't get away from Muslims. So even America, who would have thought? Well, actually, they thought early on about Muslims here because it's mentioned in the earliest documents about making it a safe place for Jews, Christians, uh, uh, infidels, and Mohammedans, Hindus. Jefferson mentioned Mohammedans and Hindus. That, that was his idea. And there were already Muslims. They knew there were Muslims. George Washington, in a letter, was requesting somebody to go find workmen for his plantation. And one of the things he said, I don't mind if they're Mohammedans. I mean, why would he even mention that if there weren't Mohammedans around offering their services? <laughs> so there have been Muslims here from the very start. But now increasing numbers and, and masajid are being built or bought in different places. But the masajid have a hurma. And a lot of Muslims don't think about this anymore. I'll give you an example. The Prophet ﷺ said, that whoever does wudu, man tawadda'a fa ahsana wudu'ahu, wa labisa ahsana thiyabihi, wa tatayyaba idha kana indahu tib, thumma dhahaba masha ila al-masjid wa lam yarkab, wa dana min al-imam wa lam yalghu. If a person goes on Juma, he does a, a, a good wudu, and in the other riwayah, the Prophet ﷺ, من اغتسل يوم الجمعة غسل الجنابة Whoever takes a ghusl on the يوم الجمعة of like janaba, as if he was in janaba. And then he goes to the first hour في ساعة الأولى فكأنما قرب بدنا It's as if he gave a camel, a big camel in sacrifice. 
in the first hour. But in this hadith, he said, whoever does ikhtasara uh, or does the wudu, and then wears his best clothes, labisa ahsana thiyabihi. See, like Harun, we, we were Christian before we were Muslim. I was a Christian before I was Muslim. We had to wear what was called your Sunday best to go to church. You didn't go to church wearing a t-shirt. In fact, you wouldn't even think of that. And if somebody did, they would have got, people would have stared at them, shocked. Like, why are you showing such disrespect to a house of God? That's how, that's how Christians would look at it. Why are you showing such disrespect to a house of God? By not even bothering to dress appropriately. By not even bothering to dress nicely one day out of the week. Well, it's, it's a casual day at work. We don't have to wear nice clothes. We've been doing that all week. That's not, that's not, the Muslims have a, we, we have a sanctity to the day of Jumu'ah. Ya Bani Adam, khudu zinatukum inda kulli masjid. Oh, children of Adam, ornament yourselves in every masjid where you go. Ornament yourselves. Wear nice perfume for other people. The Prophet ﷺ said, Man akal al baqlata thum, aw al basal wa al kurrath, fala yaqrabanna masajidana. Whoever eats garlic or leeks or onions, let him not come near our masajid. The angels don't even like what people don't like. So if you come to the masjid smelling like uh, last night's meal, and then you pray next to a person who's thinking about paradise, and you're reminding him of hell, Seriously, we have a problem. We have a problem. The masjid is supposed to be a place where you come for spiritual repose. It's a place of dignity. It's a place of sakina. The Prophet ﷺ said, if you come into the masjid, don't raise your voice, don't talk. He said, you're in prayer until you leave the masjid. He said, one of the signs of the end of time is voices would be raised in the masjid. He said one of the signs at the end of time is people would talk about worldly affairs in the masjid. You have the whole world to talk about worldly affairs. Leave the house of God to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدِ لِلَّهِ فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا So you can see Islam spreading in America, but the question, what kind of Islam? What kind of Islam? Is it going to be slacker Islam? Is it going to be like the slacker culture that's out there? Or are we going to be shuhada ala nas? People that still have human dignity in an age of utter and complete human degradation. That's the question to ask yourselves. Are we going to be dignified people that dress in a dignified manner? Just because everybody else is dressing like that. Look at how Muslims dress for centuries. Even the poorest Muslims dressed beautifully. Go to Saeed, Egypt. Go to the Swat Valley, go to the Malaysian villages and look how Muslims dress in traditional clothes with human dignity. They never dress wearing billboards on their selling people's products that they don't even get paid to do. People wearing billboards, wearing all these things on their, you know, Nike and Tommy Hilfiger or whoever. That's I ask people, are they paying you? Do you have a contract? You're a human billboard. They pay money to put their name on billboards, cardboard boxes out there. They put money. They give money to put their names on billboards. They, they give money to put their names on pixelated images on the internet, and yet you're allowing them for free to put their name on your body created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you don't even think about it. Human billboards. Total, complete, utter human degradation. This is what's happened to Bani Adam, the Khalifa. 
the Khalifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the only creature that walks upright, straight, mustaqim, with dignity, the only creature that can articulate his needs, that can complain if he has complaints, that can praise if he feels a need to praise, that can give thanks and gratitude. We're the only creature that can do that. Other creatures, dogs can show some gratitude, but they, they can't write a thank you note. Human beings are something exalted. We're an exalted species, and yet we've allowed Iblis to completely and utterly abase us. To rub our noses in the dirt, not for the sake of Allah in sajda, but to show what utterly degraded creatures we are. Because that was his claim. He said, you're choosing him over me? I'm a high thing. He's a low thing. He's nothing. And Iblis has been given respite until the end of time to prove to God that God was wrong. That's what Iblis wants to do. He wants to prove to God. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you were wrong in choosing Bani Adam. You should have chosen me and my progeny. I'll show you really how to worship you. Envy. And so that's his mission. 724. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day to degrade human beings, strip them of their, of their ornaments. Make them naked. The Prophet ﷺ said one of the signs of the end of time is you'll see people walking in marketplaces, meaning they're not aboriginal people, where, where aboriginal people are like children. They have a purity, so they dress, they have so attained. They're not in marketplaces. He didn't say public, he said in marketplace, in civilized places. You will see people walking with their thighs fully exposed. That's a sign of, of the degraded state of people, not Aboriginal people, like native peoples that, that don't look upon each other lustfully in that way. But civilized people, degraded to the point where they walk around with no shame. No shame. Shame is a beautiful thing. Haya, modesty. Every religion has a quality and a characteristic, and the quality and characteristic of my religion is modesty, a sense of shame. The Prophet ﷺ, they said that he was more modest than a virgin that was still cloistered, that hadn't come out. That was his modesty, ﷺ. One day he went to the masjid and he found people in the masjid and he said, Ma'ajlasakum, what has brought you sitting here in the masjid? And they said, the only thing that brought us here was we came to remember Allah. He said, Allah, Allah, ma'ajlasakum illa hadha. That's the only reason you came? And they said, na'am ya Rasulullah. He said, wallahi, I didn't ask you in this interrogative tuhmatan, you know, like out of suspicion, but Jibreel came to me and said that Allah was, was making mention and proud of those sitting in the masjid. So he wanted to go who, see who they were and what brought them there. The Prophet ﷺ said on Yom al Jumu'ah, if you come in the first hour and there's 12 hours of the day, 12 in the night, and they differ because we don't have 60 minute hours in traditional uh, reckoning. The hours are based on the, the, the Maghrib and Isha, so you can have an hour that's 30 minutes one uh, part of the year, and it's uh, 70 minutes another part of the year. That's, that's the way it works. So when you look at these, he mentions five hours before Jummah. That's the idea that Fajr was at 6 o'clock, and then the Jummah is at 12 o'clock. So there's your six hours. So, but if, if Fajr is at 4 o'clock, and Dhuhr is at uh, one o'clock, then the hours are extended. So that's how you have to figure it out. He said, if you go in the first hour, which is the hour after, after Fajr, on Yom al Jumu'ah, to wait until the, the Imam. This is what Muslims used to do. He said, it's as if you sacrificed a camel. If you go in the second hour, it's as if you sacrificed a, a cow, a baqarah. If you go in the third hour, فَكَأَنَّمَا it's as if you sacrificed atta the kibshan. It's as if he brought a kibshan akran. 
And if you come in the fourth hour, it's as if you brought a chicken. And if you come in the fifth hour, it's as if you brought an egg. That's it. It's as if you brought an egg. And then when the imam comes out, there's no more gifts to bring. Once the imam's out, if you come at that point, it's, the, it's closed. That's what we're giving to Allah these days. We're, the best of us are giving eggs. <laughs> Seriously. And then you wonder the state of the Muslims. <laughs> Serious people wonder like what? Ibn Atayla said, if you want to know where you stand with God, look at where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with you. Where is he on your list of priorities? If he's number one priority, then you're number one priority with him. If he's number five on the list, my work, my, my money, my wife, my, my family, whatever, you, everybody has their priorities, then that's where, that's where you stand. And if he's not even in the list of priorities, it's just lip service. So that, that's you know, something for Muslims to think about. So as we embark on a new place of worship in our community, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it a safe place, a blessed place, a respected place. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put respect of, of these places in our hearts. Because now this is, it's consecrated for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever it was before, it was bought with an intention and then that intention manifests. So people should think about that. You know, and then also about clothes is tanbih al ghafil. You know, alhamdulillah, your people praying Jumu'ah, there's lots of Muslims out there right now, they're not even bothering praying Jumu'ah. The good people, you know, inshallah, we ask Allah to be amongst the good people. But the good people come, even if they come uh, in less than the highest uh, desirable state. You know, so I'm not in any way, it's not for ta'yir to make fault or blame anybody. It's just tanbih al ghafil to remind people, wallahi, it's my intention. It's not to expose anybody or make any fault. It's just a reminder. Wa dhikr fa inna dhikra al But I have to be honest with you, I've mentioned this. People have come up to me afterwards, don't tell me how to dress. You know, get like, get angry. I'm doing it out of ghayra. You know, you have that word in, in Urdu for people who speak Urdu, ghayrat. You know, ghayrat. Ghayra is a beautiful word in, in, in Arabic because it, it's the idea of a protectiveness that you have for something that you hold dear. And if anybody tries to diminish the respect of that thing, you, you, get, you feel angry. That, ghayra is that, that feeling that comes inside of you when you see like your family member, your wife, your child being dishonored or disrespected, you feel ghayra. The, the religion of Allah is more worthy of our ghayrah than anything in this dunya. It's more worthy of our ghayrah than anything in this dunya. Aqulu qawri hada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum li sa'ina. Allahumma salli wa sallam wa baraka ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam tasliman kathira wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billah al-ali al-azim. Allahumma iftah alayna hikmatak ya Allah. Allahumma ya Allah anzal alayna as-sakinata wal-rahmah. اللهم أمن هذا المكان وأمن الأمناء على هذا المكان اللهم جعلنا من الجوادين على هذا المكان اللهم جعلنا من الذين ينفقون في سبيلك على هذا المكان اللهم احفظ نساءنا في هذا المكان وفي كل مكان اللهم احفظ أولادنا في هذا المكان وفي كل مكان اللهم طهر قلوبنا اللهم جعل المساجد أحب إلينا من الأسواق يا الله اللهم جعل زيارة المساجد أحب إلينا من الأسواق يا الله اللهم إن أحب الأماكن إليك يا الله المساجد فجعلها أحب الأماكن إلينا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم افتح علينا يا الله اللهم افتح علينا ورد وردنا إلى دينك مردا جميلا رد شبابنا إلى دينك مردا جميلا اللهم اجعل الإيمان في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان اللهم اجعل الإيمان في قلوب شبابنا يا رحم الراحمين اللهم إنك قلت وقولك الحق إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا والحمد لله رب العالمين واذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه ولا تكفروه 
واقیم و صلاح لذکره